Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and today, because you asked me to, I'm doing another debunking video where we take viral videos off Facebook and YouTube, usually DIYs and recipe ones, and see if they're real or if they have just been faked. This first video we're going to look at today, this recipe is on both 5 Minute Crafts and So Yummy, but the similarity between them is uncanny. I'm not sure who is copying who, but you can see this is shot by shot. It's not nearly a coincidence. Did you notice something funny about the So Yummy one there? If you didn't, rewind back and watch it again and see if you can pick it up. For those of you who've already done that, let me go ahead and spoil it and show you what the difference was. This is the carton before it goes in the microwave and after it's in the microwave. Obviously there's nothing in that carton, it's completely empty because they've cut the bottom off it. And then magic at the end of the video, it's back to the full size of the carton again. Let me actually make this one because just by watching it I can tell this is not going to work. It's not the ingredients that are the issue, it's the method that's the issue here. So Yummy said to use 475 milliliters, and 5 Minute Crafts said to use 300. I'm going to go with the smaller volume because I think it's going to boil over anyway so we'll give it the best chance of working. Add the other ingredients. Now these ingredients as I said technically could make a dessert. You've got gelatin, and sugar in the marshmallows, that should set it and make it sweet. And the protein in the egg should make it rich and also help it set. There's just no way it's gonna work using this method. Now we're supposed to shake it, and then we're supposed to put it in the microwave for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a long time for anything in the microwave. This is what happened after 30 seconds. The marshmallows melted and expanded, which is what they do when you put them in the microwave. Oh no, it fell out. I'll just put them back in again and then after one minute the milk starts to bubble up and boil over as expected and the eggs are going to curdle in there and make it lumpy because they're being cooked for too long. This is not how you make an egg custard. And after 10 minutes, hmm, why are these debunking videos always so messy? I guess I'll let that chill. Yummy, milk flan, mm mm. This looks like one for Dave to try. <laughs> it's bad. Is that like, is that supposed to be good? Is that like something people order at a restaurant? <laughs> uh, excuse me waiter, I didn't order the baby spew. Next, Troom Troom's gonna show us how to make it easy. These bananas are so delicate. They are so quick to turn spotty and go bad. To fix the situation, take a piece of foil. Wrap the fruit in it. Wow! So much time has passed, but the banana in the foil is still as yellow and appetizing. So to test this one, I've got two bananas from the same bunch, so they're the same age. I've tried to find ones without marks on, but this one does have a bit of a bruise on it here already, so I'm gonna make that one the one that we leave and we'll put the better one in foil, so that the one with less bruises is in the foil straight away. I'm pressing it really gently because I don't want the foil to mark it, and then we'll set that apart for five days like they said, and we'll check that later on in the video. While we're on the topic of keeping it fresh, So Yummy says that to keep your bread fresh and to stop it from going moldy, just add a stick of celery in with the bag of bread. Then when you come back a week later, there's no mold and it's done its job. Well, let's test that one out too. I've got two bags of bread that have the exact same use by date, so they're the exact same batch, same brand, putting a stick of celery in with one and nothing in with the other. I actually came back five days later on this one and there was no mold on either of them so I'm actually going to have to leave them another five days and then we'll see what happens then and I'll show you that at the end. The next video is from 5 Minute Crafts for Kids and this one has 6 million views. The description below the video says cooking is such a pleasure and it's even more fun to eat everything you cook afterwards. So let's have a look at what we're going to be eating after we cook what's in their video today. We've got Skittles, and then we're adding vodka, because it's for kids, and making sweet, colourful, alcoholic drinks for kids that they can have fun consuming afterwards. If you see a video that you think shouldn't be on YouTube, screenshot the advert that's on it and send it to the advertiser, send them a message saying you're paying for this content, you're paying for alcoholic drinks to be promoted to children. Five Minute Crafts for Teens puts butter and Werther's into a pan. 
and then they melt them over the stove top. Now we know this must be sped up, otherwise it would just burn. And then they're adding corn kernels into the pan. That looks really, really burnt there. There's only a few kernels popping. Then they flip it over and there's a full bowl of caramel popcorn and magically it's not too hot to touch even though it's just come out of the pan. So we're gonna try this one of course. I know I'm gonna regret this because it's gonna be a pain to clean my pan. But anyway, let me fast forward the melting process for you. Give that a bit of a stir because their next shot looked perfectly mixed in. They didn't have the butter and the caramel separate. Then add the corn kernels, put a bowl over the top. It's a bit fogged so it's a little bit hard to see but the caramel is starting to burn at the bottom and the corn is not even popping yet. This pan is going to be a pain to clean. Oh there it is! The first pop! Now we're popping! It's starting to smoke as well so I'm going to stop it there and flip it over. <coughs> smoke. My poor pan. I'll try and save these popped ones for Dave. It's, uh, it, it's quite well done. Mmm, <laughs> you, you can really taste the, just a hint of charcoal in the caramel. <laughs> if you do want to know how to make the best caramel popcorn, you'll have to watch the Gravity Defying Popcorn Cake. This is the sort of food that Dave is used to me serving up. And now onto a Blossom video. They're putting hot coal into peanut butter and then freezing it for 24 hours and then magically you have a crystal. Now quite a few of you sent me this one. I'm not going to repeat an analysis with this because number one, there is no way in the world that can work. And number two, the King of Random channel has done a great video dedicated to just this one. So pretty much everything about this is just 100% nonsense. They definitely faked it. So I'll link you to that one underneath if you want to watch that. Back to baking, take some melted candy melts and add straws and let it harden. Then pull them out, add a sunflower seed, which looks cute, they look like cute little candles. Light them up and it's an edible candle. The thing that's strange to me about this one is that candy melts don't melt like that. They don't drip, but they're very thick when they're melted. So let's try and make it. Melt the candy melts, add the straws, let it set and then struggle to pull them out. The candy melt candles are broken because of the struggle to get them out. So I'm gonna melt more candy melts and use a piping bag to fill a straw because that's heaps easier. And then run a knife down the straw and take that off. Add a sunflower seed to the top. And now to get that drip. Light the sunflower seed. Wait a minute, I can't get it to light. Let me hold the flame on it for a lot longer. Hmm. How am I going to get a drip if I can't get it to light? Once more. We have smoke and a little flame. But now it's gone out with still no drip. Let's try another one. Yes, look at that. I got one candle to light out of all of them. Woohoo! But no drip. And it's gone out again. Okay, forget the sunflower seed. I'm going to add an actual candle wick so that we can see if we can replicate that drip. Light it up and still no drip because candy melts don't drip like that. The flame is burning the sugar in the candy melts and the candy melts are soft when they're heated up but they don't drip like wax does. So what did they do in their video then? Well, if we have a really close look, you can see here there's a little bit on the side that's there before it started even heating up. And then in the next frame, there's blue up the sunflower seed like a wax drip has been dropped from above. And then your eyes get distracted watching the drip go down and yet another drop magically appears on top. In case you were in any doubt, this is not how you make a drip cake. Candy melts are not gonna drip down like that. You need to make a ganache, which is cream and chocolate, or you could use cream and candy melts and then you let it cool to just the right thickness and then just pipe it around the edge, letting it drip down just a little bit. This next one, lots of you sent to me and asked me to review, so I'm quickly gonna run through this one. So first thing says to grab some grapes, put them in pantyhose, pull them over a glass, add water, and the skin in purple grapes creates a pink pigment. 
Now, I don't know about that because I think a lot of you have actually washed grapes before and would know that nothing comes off them when you wash them. You can actually make a dye from grape skin, but you need a lot of skins and it's not gonna make that brighter color. It's more a muted thing, as all natural dyes tend to give you, not bright, vivid colors, but muted tones. But let's try it anyway. Put the grapes in the glass, add the water, and no color is coming off them. If I take the t-shirt out so we can just get some good footage and add some gel food coloring, then I can get some nice shots. With your pretty little light. Let's get rid of the food color, wash the glass and put the t-shirt back in and add the grapes on top. And I'm gonna leave that overnight. I'm gonna give it a long time just to see what happens. And 24 hours later, surprise, surprise, the t-shirt is still white. Now for rosemary. I'm going to just copy what they do for each of these. Add the rosemary and the t-shirt into a pot of water and I assume we heat that up. Then theirs has yellow coming from the rosemary but there's no yellow coming from my rosemary. I'm going to leave that for 24 hours and now we've got some colour that's leached into the water and the shirt is a very slight creamy colour. Now turmeric. Turmeric does stain things. If you've ever got it on your countertop, you'll know it's hard to get off. So if anything's gonna work, it should be this one. Add the hot water, then the baking soda. Now we have two reactions happening here. Number one, the baking soda, if you add that to hot water, is going to fizz and make carbon dioxide bubbles because that's what baking soda does in a cake. When you heat it up, it starts to fizz and make bubbles, so the cake rises. And number two, the turmeric is acting as an indicator. It shows you if something is basic or neutral. If it's basic, it will turn red. If it's neutral, it will turn yellow. Now I've left this one overnight as well so we can see if it colors it. The shirt definitely looks red but the question is, will it hold that color? Interestingly, when you rinse it in water, which is neutral, the shirt turns yellow again. And then if I add washing powder, which is basic, it turns a reddy color again. And that's because this is still acting as an indicator. The turmeric is still in the shirt. Once it's properly rinsed, I wonder if it'll still keep doing that. I'll wash it and then we'll test it again. All right, so this has been washed and dried and it's a nice light lemony yellow, not the bright red. But let's just get a little bit of soap, which is basic, on to my finger. And we'll put some on and see what happens. Ah, look, it's still changing color. As you can see, it's clear on my finger, but it is still changing color when I put anything basic on it. I don't know about you, but I don't really want to wear clothes that if I get something basic on it, it's going to indicate the colour on it. I don't want to wear a basic indicator. <laughs> but it's quite fun if you want to do that experiment with kids. I just wouldn't dye my clothes that way. On to another indicator, red cabbage. Now this is another fun experiment you can do, but you don't need to do it with clothes. If you put red cabbage into a container with hot water, leave it overnight, then you can strain out the cabbage and just use that bright purple liquid that it gives you. If you add an acid, it's gonna turn pink, so some lemon juice or some vinegar. If you add a base like baking soda, it's going to turn blue and it's a good indicator and it's a fun reaction to do with kids. Whether it will dye clothes or not, I don't know. And then if it's going to keep having this reaction, if it does, that's probably not ideal. But let's test it out and have a look. Here's the cabbage that's been soaking overnight and as I said, that gave off a great purple color. It looks good so far, but I don't know if this will hold when it's washed. I'll test that in a minute. Add some vinegar in and it will go pink. And now for some baking powder. That's fizzing because of the vinegar and it's reacting with the acid in the vinegar. If you didn't have the vinegar in there, it wouldn't fizz. And that's turning blue. I'm gonna label these so we know which one was which when they're washed. So C is for cabbage and then P for purple. Not that that looks super purple, it's a bit bluish. Now, because these haven't been washed, they are of course still soaked in the cabbage water. So they're still gonna be acting as an indicator. So even if you didn't wash them and you just dried them so you had this color, they're still gonna be reacting like you saw with the yellow shirt. So the issue with that is if you add something acidic like lemon juice, it's going to turn it pink. Now sweat is acidic. So I want you to imagine someone wearing this shirt and sweating in it. This is not gonna be the best look. Anyway, let me wash those so we can see if the color holds. So after washing, here's the cabbage blue and the cabbage purple and the cabbage pink. 
If you want a dye to stick to fabric, you actually need to add a chemical called a mordant to your dye so that the color sticks and doesn't just wash out. Or you could just buy the clothes in the color you want them to be. Eucalyptus leaves, we have plenty of these in Australia. I heated these for a long time and then left them overnight to soak and managed to get a little bit of color out of them and we've got a nice creamy color. I actually quite like that color. Moving on to spinach. Wilted spinach releases a turquoise dye apparently, but if we rewind back, their spinach isn't wilted at all. Here's the spinach in my pot. If I just freeze frame it, then isolate the background from the leaves and use color correction to make it whatever color I want to make it. Next is avocado. And I think you know by now how this is gonna work out. 24 hours later, gross, it stinks and it's not pink. I'm gonna wash all of these after dyeing and washing, here we've got the three cabbages, spinach, grapes, turmeric, avocado, gum leaf, and rosemary. Next, they have faded black jeans, plus coffee makes your jeans really dark black like they're brand new. Now I've soaked one leg of these jeans in coffee and the other one I didn't. Can you tell which one? Hmm, me neither. But look, I can change the exposure on my camera and now I can do a before and after shot. I was speaking to Jeff Horowitz from the Wall Street Journal the other week. He has written a great article about fake DIY videos and I'll link you to that one below as well. In the article, he said that in response to this video that got more than 34 million views, toaster manufacturers came out in a statement and said you should never put foil in a toaster because it can cause fires and electric shocks. Smeg, which is the toaster that's featured in the video, says they do not under any circumstances suggest that you do this. The co-founder of First Media called that video regrettable, describing the company's decision to take them down as evidence of its industry leading standards. Well, I just went over to the So Yummy channel and I just found that exact same video has just been re-uploaded to the channel and is still there. Anyway, let's check up on the bananas. They look pretty much the same whether they were wrapped in foil or not. So wrapping them in foil is an absolute waste of time and money. Next for the bread. After five days, as I said, there was no mold, so I left them for another five days. And if we have a look at the one without celery first, it has a circle of white mold here and a couple of little dots of mold growing there. And that's about it. Now for the one with celery, and we've got some mold here and there, a little bit there and here, and then the disgusting bit. The celery itself is moldy and gross, which has made the bread down this end very moldy. Gross. Hacks are supposed to be helpful. They're not supposed to be destructive. That's just ugh, disgusting. I'm gonna leave you with another clip from Blossom and you can tell me in the comments what you think is wrong with this particular clip rather than me telling you, because I think you guys are pretty intelligent and you've figured this stuff out by now. With thanks to my patrons for supporting me and this channel without you, none of this would happen. You guys are legends. Thank you so much. Subscribe to How To Cook That for more cakes, chocolates and desserts. You can click over to watch more debunking videos or watch recipes that actually work on the channel. Make it a great week and I'll see you on Friday.